and Stacker on a journey to find silver. International Stacker. Hey guys, International Stacker. I'm going to be here with a quick video, I'm trying to make it not too long. But you all saw me unbox uh, these silver uh, Roman denarius before in a previous video, and you've seen me unbox these um, bronze Roman coins. And I just wanted to, let me get some more light on the situation here. I just wanted to quickly go over, um, you know, what should be a warning to the US and what we've been doing here. So basically, uh, silver coins were being minted in Rome uh, from about 280 BC onward. And uh, that was called the pre-denarius uh, era. These right here are all what's called uh, silver denarius. And they started in about 211 BC. Now back then, uh, in this time period, one denarius, one of these coins, was pretty much pay for a day of work uh, for someone. For a complete day of work, they'd get one denarius as long as they weren't being taxed. <laughs> that was the key, is tax. So what I have here is a few coins I'll show you. Uh, so this puppy right here, uh, this is actually an emperor, and his name is uh, Vespasian, I think his name is. He died in 79 AD. This coin right here, and what we're going to go over is debasement, and kind of what our country is doing now. So this coin right here was 3.4 grams of silver, and its purity was about 93.5%. And this was struck by the Roman Mint in 76 AD. Moving on down, I have, yeah, this one right here. Um, this was Emperor uh, Faustina, a senior, because there's two of them, a junior and a senior. Uh, this emperor, or, and I think this was actually a female, yeah, I think. Uh, this one died in uh, 140 AD. Uh, this was 3.2 grams of silver, and it was 83.5% pure. So you can see there in about a difference of, what, 70 years? 70, 80, 90, 40, yeah, about 60 years. Uh, the percentage went from 93.5 to 83.5, and from 3.4 grams to 3.2 grams. And that was struck in about 146 AD to 161, depending. Um, the next one I have here, this one, uh, this was actually Emperor Geta, and this is the coin, it's called Geta as Caesar. And this emperor died in 211 AD. So we fast forward quite a bit. We started BC, now before Christ, now we're AD, which is Anna Domingo in the year of our Lord. Um, so this right here was 3.85 grams, but again, it was only 83.5%. And this was struck anywhere from 197 to 209 AD. The last one that I can identify, which is this guy right here, uh, this is Servius Alexander, and uh, he died in about 235 uh, AD, and now we're down to 2.55 grams of silver, and it's still 83.5% silver. Um, but as you continue on, uh, there's a big, big, big decrease in purity. And side note, these ones right here I cannot identify, so I'm not sure what this is, this is, this, or this is, so... If you can identify them, let me know, because I can't. Um, but these guys, um, so basically, these denarius in 241, so they went from my first one, which is what, 93.5% to 83.5%. Then in 241, they went to about 48%. And then in 275, they went to 5%. And then you get to this period here, these Bronze Age coins, or not Bronze Age, but Bronze coins, and... So they went from 275.5% to 306 to 410 AD to these, to these puppies here, which are basically bronze. There is no, uh, let's see if I can get a better shot. There is no silver in these at all. These are just bronze coins. There you go. Some good shots. Try to get you a couple of good ones in here. And I don't collect these Roman coins for like investments or whatever as part of my stack. I just collect them because they're fun and I love history. And we're gonna have some other cool videos coming for you guys soon. But you can see these Bronze Age, these are, they're just bronze, right? So we've been totally debased at this point. Um, 
And again, these coins here are about from 306 to 410 AD. And it's argued that the um, Roman Empire fall, fell in about 476 AD. There's like discussions about that because I believe it was the West Empire that went down in 476. But it was around that time. So we went from BC, starting with silver, then through the early ADs, we had debasement. Then we switched to bonds, bronze, and then we had total collapse. And there's a lot of argue for those collapses and what caused it and it's all the public works they added. A good video to watch is Hidden Secrets of Money by Mike Maloney. I think episode two and three go into kind of this and the Greeks and, and all this stuff uh, really in depth and talks about debasement and the kind of things that's happening in the United States right now. So talking about the United States, just a quick rundown. And like between 1792 to the 1830s, like 1834, uh, we had actually a gold and silver standard, but it was more focused on silver. And the Coinage a Act um, that was uh, recommended by Alexander Ham Hamilton defined a dollar, a U.S. dollar, as 371.25 grams of silver, pure silver. Uh, minted with alloy, obviously, for a coin, so that made it 416 grams, or grains. So, basically, um, also at this time, gold was authorized. It was authorized in denominations of $10 at that time, those dollars, which was an eagle, or 250, which was a quarter, quarter eagle. And the silver to gold ratio was about 15 to 1 at this point. In 1834, it's so a little bit later to about the 1860s, it pretty much switched from mo mostly silver to a gold, a mostly gold standard. So uh, the ratio is reevaluated to 16 to 1, and uh, a gold eagle was reduced from 247.5 grains to 232 grains. Um, and, and basically it was reduced a little bit, or is in increased by 0.2 uh, in 1837 to make it exactly 9 tenths uh, gold. And they did the same thing with silver and made it exactly nine tenths uh, of, of, of silver. Uh, there was a law that was modified in 1873, which uh, made everything go YOLO. And basically, when this happened, um, no longer was a dollar 412.5 grains of silver. That was completely taken out. Completely. There's a, also a period between 1879 to 1933, which is kind of the gold standard with, within the U.S. Um, but in 1933, it ended. There was a ton of bank runs. And in April 5th of 1933, hoarding, hoarding, it's not collecting, not keeping, not st stockpiling, but hoarding gold uh, was forbidden. And the government bought it back for $20.67 an ounce. Um, and of course, in January of 1935, not that much for you know, not, not long from then, it was reevaluated at $35 an ounce. So, for all those poor people who turned it in, they uh lost like $15 on the, on the uh, reevaluation, right? Basically, from 1934 to 1973, it's kind of like a quasi gold standard, uh, where the money was backed by gold, um, but it was only redeemable by other country others other countries other big central banks um but then before that well quickly after that um and well first off it was supported by Bretton woods in 1944 so that supported that um and then in 1968 uh sil silver certificates so during this time there were silver certificates and people could turn in the certificates and get silver but in 1968 that stopped and then in 1971, Nixon, um, for various reasons, and again, go watch Hidden Secrets of Money. This is covered very in-depth, quicker than this as well. It was, uh, <clears throat> no more could uh, even foreign banks convert their U.S. dollars into gold uh, because we were in a situation in the United States to where we were running out of all of our gold. Countries had kind of caught on to the show and were trying to cash in all their money uh, or, or all their U.S. dollars uh, for gold. And then ever since then, our money's kind of been on a free-for-all. I'm going to call it money. We'll call it fiat currency because that literally means, uh, I believe it's Greek. Is it Greek? It might be Latin. It literally means like let it be to put it into existence. So before that, we you could actually go look at what the U.S. dollar was worth. And maybe I can pull up a chart of the U.S. dollar. 
Um, and when it was back, backed, we were like never in debt. Uh, buying power chart. Um, but you'll see quickly here when I pull this chart up how quickly the US dollar lost its buying power, which is just, it's been insane. Oh, here's a good chart. Here's a good chart. So the mistakes the Roman Empire made with spending too much money, making too many great works, spending too much money on wars and different international things is the same mistake the United States is making. And if you can see here, um, so there it is. This shows the buying power of the U.S. dollar since 1900 to 2000. Uh, and you can see it's got like the little th wars there. Let me focus that. Gulf War, War on Terrorism. But it's really interesting if you look at monetary history, how much our, our money's devalued. And even the 70s and 60s when it's still backed by gold, it wasn't one for one. It was like fractional. Um, I forget how much it was, but like... You only had to have like one do one ounce of gold to back up so many dollars. Back here is where everything was great. And here is when the Federal Reserve was made. And then we had a little bounce back up and we kind of returned to our roots. And it's been, just been slowly diminishing. And that's actually pretty sad to see, guys. So like, I know like my dad says like, oh, I used to be able to go see like a movie for a quarter and stuff. It's, and I used to think, oh man, money's changed so much since you, you know, things just got more expensive. Things didn't get more expensive. Our money just lost its, its buying power. So I tell people this all the time, gold and silver is not about an investment. It's about preserving your wealth. So if you're to put $100,000 in a safe and $100,000 worth of gold or silver in a safe for 10 years, over those 10 years, you're going to lose at least 2% on the dollars to inflation each year, minimum. Um, but for the gold and silver, it should relatively be able to hold your buying power. And, you know, by all means, I'm not a financial advisor and any decisions you make are your own and yours, all, yours alone. That's my little disclaimer. Everyone does it, I guess. Um, but this is kind of like the reasons why I stack and why I got into this and why I've been saving and why I think it's important that, uh, you know, we kind of wake up to the system we have now and realize that, uh, you know, history does repeat itself, and we're repeating a lot of the same mistakes um, that other great empires who nearly ruled half the world uh, made before, and hopefully we do not suffer the same consequences. But if we do suffer the same consequences, I'm going to be prepared with stacking gold and silver. And if we don't suffer the same comp uh, consequences, whenever I'm ready to cash this all in in my retirement or for my kids or whatever, or family or whatever... Um, I will have preserved my buying power and not let it get taken away in the hidden attacks that the, I call it a hidden tax, the hidden tax that's called inflation, right? So that's kind of my thoughts and theories and a quick rundown on the history. I might've gotten some of those dates wrong or, you know, off by a few years. A lot of that was just off the top of my head, but I just want to throw this out there for you guys to see. Um, and you know, Hopefully you like these Roman coins. I'm probably going to get a few more because I love these things. They are great. And it's cool to think there's some like Roman soldier or something running around with these in their pockets. Maybe in a war uh, back in the day. So that would be pretty amazing. Constantine, that was a pretty famous uh, Roman emperor. Nero too, but it's because he like burnt his entire town down. Something like this, right? Alright guys, well I hope you like it. Uh, this is a little different than my normal videos. Let me know if you like this type of video, if you want me to make more of these in the future. Uh, and I'd be happy to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have myself a breakfast blend coffee and I'll catch you guys on the next one.